The worst thing about Love Nina is that it's finished. Hey everyone, I'm finally getting around to talking about Love Nina. I know I'm a terrible Hellenist for taking this long, but I kind of took a while to watch the last episode because I didn't want it to end. And very quickly, for those of you who haven't seen it, Love Nina is about a 20-year-old nanny called Nina. She moves down to London to look after these two boys and cook and clean. And it kind of sounds mundane in the sense that it's just about the things she gets up to on a daily basis, going to the butchers, going to yoga class, having a kind of weird relationship with a guy called Nunny. But what makes this so compelling is the character of Nina. She is just so fascinating that you cannot help be captiv captivated by her. So it's set in the 1980s, which is a lot of fun, and it takes place in Primrose Hill, and it's actually based around a street that is about three streets away from my favourite coffee shop in all the world. So it's an area that I visit quite, uh, quite frequently, so seeing it come to life in this way for me personally is absolutely thrilling. And as I said, it's kind of just all about the character of Nina, and she wants to go to go back to school and get an education and get her 1A level in English and she's not that great at cooking or cleaning but she's fantastic with George's two boys and these two little kids are absolutely fantastic actors and the characters they play are just so hilarious to say the most random of things and the script is part of the reason why I think Love Nina works. Now it's based on a book, I haven't read the book but the script is written by Nick Hornby and it is so funny. So we have a fantastic script, but it wouldn't be as captivating if we didn't have a fantastic cast. Faye Marsley plays Nina, and I couldn't think of anybody else for the role now that I've seen Love Nina. She's just perfect in this position. George, played by HBC, Hannah Bonham Carter, the entire reason why I watched Love Nina in the first place. Now, George as a character, I probably put too much emphasis on, but I kind of wonder if anybody else feels the same. On the one hand... George feels quite a normal character, not a stock character, but she's motherly, she's a professional working mother. But at the same time, I feel like there's something else there and I want to kind of dig a little deeper. I feel like we've just scratched the surface with George. Maybe as a Bonham Carter fan, I'm looking too much into her. But there we are. And Jason Watkins plays Malcolm, who is over at the house pretty much every night for tea. And... He is hilarious, he brings a lot of hilarity to the show and I don't think it would be the same without him at all. So as I said at the beginning, the worst part is that it's over. Five episodes, half an hour, 25 minutes each, that's it. Two and a half hours of Love Nina, that is not enough. Absolutely not enough because it is so funny, it's so warm and heartfelt and comforting. It's quite rude in parts, a little bit risky. There's this whole thing uh, about a heart that was drawn on the floor and the script surrounding that scene I thought was just the best thing ever and a little bit of feminism in there as well. Absolutely fantastic. At the time of this video there are some episodes of Love Nina on iPlayer but not them all. Obviously I will be getting the DVD because I have all of Bottom Carter's DVDs and I definitely recommend you check it out. Without, assuming the DVD will be released, I haven't actually looked that far into it but fingers crossed. Maybe we'll get a second series. I hope we will. I don't know how the ratings have been but it's Helena Bottom Carter. It's hilarious. It's Primrose Hill. I could ask for nothing more. If you have seen Love Nina, do feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you haven't seen it, please go and check it out. Thank you for watching this video and I will speak to you all soon. Bye!